Yeah, thank you for the introduction. And before I want to start, I uh, want to emphasize that um, a main, the main of the work has been done by Hossein. And uh, he also wanted to present a paper, but unfortunately his visa got not accepted in time. So I will do my best to present his paper or the paper on his behalf. And yet this is joint work with uh, also Kino Hasler, Thorsten Holz and Mario Fritz. And um, yeah, the work is about yeah, benchmarking code generative models uh, from a security perspective. And um, I want to start with a very quick introduction into uh, code generation. So um, like uh, natural or like language models for natural language, the idea is basically you input some description of the code that you want um, uh, or also the first uh, or the, the header of the function and then the, the language model will automatically complete the code that you want to have. And these models are also already used by millions of developers. For example, the system by GitHub called Copilot is yeah, built in, into many existing systems. Um, however, the, the training data that is used for uh, also training um, uh, models for code generation is um, normally collected from the internet, including all kind of vulnerabilities that you can find in that, uh, that code. And in this example here, which is actually generated by, um, by Copilot, uh, the system um, uh, um, yeah, generated a, a potential SQL injection. So here you can manipulate the data input to include some instruction that might influence your data set or might uh, uh, output some of the, the data set uh, behind. Um, yeah, and uh, it has also shown that just small changes in the input for the language model can make a difference between whether the, the, the resulting code might be vulnerable or secure. And yeah, previous work has already shown that this might be a, an issue so that generated code can contain vulnerabilities. And uh, so far, there has no systematic data set to evaluate uh, models uh, uh, and the security of these uh, of uh, generative models here. And also there's no comparison or benchmarking possible between different kinds of models. Um, yeah, and in this work, um, we actually um, uh, designed uh, uh, an automatic approach to, uh, to to generate a data set for security analysis for different kinds of vulnerabilities and also um, generated a data set that we published for benchmarking uh, any kind of code language model and also um, added a comparison between different models in terms of their security. And for this, uh, what we did is we created um, some inputs that we called um, non-secure prompts, and these prompts would potentially lead to vulnerable code. So uh, if you have these prompts um, for some kind of specific vulnerability, uh, you can check whether the model but generates a code that might be secure or vulnerable. And then the question is, um, how would you find the respective inputs? So how would you find inputs that can lead to potential vulnerable code? And um, yeah, what we did here is we used um, some future learning appro uh, approaches. So like future learning for natural language, you basically just show the, the, the model some examples of the answer you want to have. And then the model, model can learn just to predict the same pattern. And um, this also works for code language models. So what you can do is just show some examples, so a few examples of code, so vulnerable code and uh, potential prompts that are used. And if you show the model some examples, uh, what you then can query is a potential prompt that uh, might be used or that can be used for the same model or any other kind of generative models to gen generate code. And um, for the initial data set, what we needed is um, uh, a few sets or a few examples of, of uh, code that contains some vulnerabilities. So we, uh, uh, for, for this, we used some existing paper on uh, code generation um, that analyzed uh, the security, but also some data set that is used for benchmarking 
the security of software in general. And we just define the first or the first the, the, the first lines of the code as the input prompt, and then the, the, the part that contains also the vulnerability is the second part that could then potentially be generated. And um, in total, we tested three different approaches. So one uh, more classical one where we showed first the vulnerable code plus the potential uh, prompt, and a few examples of these. And at the end, we only showed the vulnerable part of some code and asked for the, the respective input prompt that could be used for generating the last sample. We also tested uh, approaches where we only showed the input prompts without the vulnerabilities itself, um, and also a one-shot approach where we only showed one sample of, of a prompt. Um, yes, and with that, these non-secure prompts, we then can query any kind of model to, and get some uh, get a set of potentially vulnerable code. And uh, this code then can, or we, we tested then with static analysis to first find out if it would if it would be secure or vulnerable, but also to find the specific vulnerability that might or that that the the code contains. And um, the, the, the idea of static analysis or the, the benefits of static analysis is basically that you cannot only tell that the code is vulnerable, but you can identify the exact line and also the exact vulnerability that is in the code. So here, uh, it's uh, 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 the problem is that with, uh, with, uh, you could uh, construct some kind of input if it gets unpickled, uh, that uh, you, uh, you can get root access to your system and also potentially uh, an attacker could do the same. So um, um, the um, vulnerabilities are uh, normally classified or can be classified in more than 400 different kind of types called so-called common weakness enumeration CWEs. And um, yeah, they are containing all different kind of, of vulnerabilities, memory violations, deprecated hashing functions, SQL injections, and so on. And yeah, with that, um, we can generate very diverse uh, versions of non-secure prompt that could also lead to different kind of vulnerabilities. And um, I want to give a few um, insights into our evaluation. So for the first part, we are actually using two models. So one pure code generation model that can not handle any nat natural language, code gen, and also ChatGTP that can do both, so uh, generate natural language, but also uh, it can generate code. And also two languages with uh, um, different uh, CWEs, so Python and C. Um, yeah, for the for the uh, uh, for the instruction tuned models, what we also needed is some kind of of prompt just to make sure that the the the, the output is, that is generated is pure code and also that the code that we want. Um, we also played around a little bit with the prompt to see if it would make a big difference in terms of the security. And in our experiments, we could not find uh, any differences here. And in the first part, what we did is basically. Um, um, so what we did is we, 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 we analyzed how many diverse vulnerabilities we can potentially generate. So uh, we have a bunch of different uh, CWEs here. The details are not important for that part. But what we can see is that the more samples we generate, the more of these samples also, um, uh, also contain vulnerable code after we remove duplicated code. So we don't, did all, only count each sample once. And what we also tested is if we could target very specific vulnerabilities. So if you use a non-secure prompt that was generated from very specific vulnerability, if it would also lead to the very same uh, vulnerability if we use it for generation. And um, yeah, uh, also here what we did is we generated prompts from in the columns we can see that the, the, the CWs we, uh, we used for generating the non-secure prompts and um, in the rows. And in the columns, we can see the resulting vulnerability. And uh, we have most of the, the um, um, 
or we have the highest uh, numbers on the diagonal, which means that actually in most of the cases, we generated exact the same vulnerability we were targeting. We have a few cases where we found different vulnerabilities, uh, but also um, this can be very similar uh, relating to what exactly uh, we are targeting. And um, and third aspect we investigated is actually if we if the vulner or if if the non-secure prompts also transfer to different kind of, uh, of generative models. So what we did here we is uh, we we uh, we generated non-secure prompts with a specific model and tested it on uh, on uh, the other models as well. So here we can see all four possible combinations. So we generated uh, non-secure prompts with both models and used both of the, the versions also to query the same model, but also the respect of other models. Um, and after did, uh, removing uh, duplicated uh, prompts, we uh, got um, a couple of codes that we could test. And in the first step, we, we checked how many vulnerabilities we have for the same model. So if we use the same model for generating the prompts and the vulnerability, and then also for the respective other model. And what we can see here is that we can actually find a significant number of vulnerabilities for both models. So, so that actually uh, our prompts do transfer between different models. And um, in the in the um, uh, in, in, yeah in the in the uh, finally we, we also benchmarked different kind of code generative language models. This time we used uh, ChatGDP and and Code Llama to generate a data set of 280 non-secure prompts for different vulnerabilities, and also we tested different models, um, both instruction tuned models or uh, pure code uh, language models. And yeah, for in all of these cases, we could find a significant number of vulnerable code, uh, even if we only sample the top uh, output of the model. And if we sample, sample more um, versions, we could find even more vulnerabilities for in all of these models as well. Um, but more interesting is also, that there is no clear difference between the models that we used for sampling our non-secure prompts in comparison to other models. So there are some models that are better and some models that are worse. And that the best model is actually uh, Cochin with the smallest number of parameters. But I also have to add a disclaimer that we also tested uh, functionality here and that this model was actually in our test uh, the model with the lowest functionality. So the, the, the code that we generated was not always correct. Um, yeah, and with that, I want to conclude my talk. So um, uh, we, we, yeah, uh, we uh, proposed a future learning approach to generate data set for security analysis for code generation models. Um, and basically we can uh, use this approach for different kind of uh, vulnerability types. And also we uploaded our data set and also the code to generate the prompts. And with that, I want to thank you and um, will do my best to answer your questions. But of course, Hossein will also be happy if you just, uh, if you uh, want to reach out with the discussion.